Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching across the world. It's time to read my book with me. Um, I've been reading my first book that the Lord helped me to write. You are. I've read, I've read uh, four chapters of it. You can go online and read it. I've read chapter one that says you are the temple of the living God. And chapter 2 that says you are God's battle and chapter 3 that says you are the light of the world and uh, I'm going to be reading chapter 5 today okay so I've read four chapters so far so I give you back all the chapters again I couldn't read last week because my manager was not around he went to he traveled around the world so i had to wait for my manager to come that's my husband you know so i've read chapter one that is you are the temple of god i've read chapter two that says you are god's battle at i've read chapter three that says you are god's masterpiece masterpiece and i've read chapter four that says you are the light and today i'm going to be reading chapter five that says you are god's workmanship i want to give god praise for what tremendous things have started happening since i've started reading the, my book many people have placed their orders they have you know across the continent people are ordering the book you have the chance to order yours if you can go to our page foundation ministry worldwide page the book is there the music is there all our resources are there you can order and have a good read and uh, you'll be sure you'll be blessed because all of them came from the inspiration of the holy spirit and uh, none of the word of god comes out and goes back void he has power and that power is still available even in the world so today read with me my book titled you are chapter 5 that says you are God's workmanship you are chapter 5 you are God's workmanship we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 looking at a little baby we often marvel at god's workmanship how he can put together tiny little fingers and toes bright eyes and precious smiles it is a beautiful and a wonderfully made by god indeed for you are created by god for God created my innermost being. In Psalm 139 verse 13 to 14, it says, You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That is Psalm 139 from verse 13 to 14. The marvelous work we see in a new baby is only the least of two phases of God's workmanship. And sadly, the first phase faces eventual destruction if the second phase does not take place. It is this second phase of God's workmanship that Paul refers to our passage above. You see, as innocent as the goggles and cuckoos of an infant can be, there is still on the lines a sinful nature that will have to be dealt with if God is going to do any true lasting workmanship with us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sorry, my book is going to it just disappeared and you're going to continue to read. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. okay you are 
God's workmanship. Okay. And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Wherein in time past you walk according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the loss of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he has loved us. That's Ephesians chapter 2 from 1 to 4. We are simply physical raw material God will use as instrument of his love and peace once he has crafted us into the people he planned for us to be. And there is a problem. In Paul's letter, he shares a harsh reality with the Ephesians. They are all dead. This way, this may be a shock to many of us. It may come as a shock to many of us if we hear such an evaluation of the state of being. Having a pause, breathing, moving, thinking, feeling has nothing to do with the life from God's perspective. To God, if we have sin, we are separate. We are separated by that sin from him. If we are separated from God, we are dead, pure and simple. If we are self breathing and thinking as life-defining measures, we disqualify ourselves from becoming God's workmanship. God can't do his workmanship on a dead person, whether they think they are dead or not. God knew that we would be born sinners. So he planned right from the beginning, out of his great love for us, to make up to make a way for us to become alive. It is by his grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul was careful to explain an important fact about God's grace. It does not come from us, it is a gift. We accept his gift through faith in Christ Jesus, and in his gift, we are made alive. Now God has something to work with. This is the very good news. Ephesians chapter 2, that's 4 to 9. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the porter. We are all the work of your hands. That's Isaiah 64 verse 8. When we become alive, we become like certain clay in a potter's hand, pliable and yielding to the work of the potter's hand. Have you ever watched a potter spin his work in a pottery wheel? It is, be it is precise work that takes a great deal of kneeling and pressing to shape the formless lump of clay into a shape the potter intends. It is hard. It takes a lot of force, especially in the beginning. So it is with our potter. God and his clay, as we are. When we become God's workmanship, we are subjecting ourselves to something uncomfortable molding and shaping especially as god begins his work on us but as we continue to yield to the guidance of his hands we will become more and more the useful implements he intends us to be think about it a lump of clay of no use in its original form but after the lump is formed grazed fired and finished it is a vase a bowl a cup it is beautifully purpose pieces so what is god that's what god is doing for us so what is god forming us to do good work in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says for we are god's masterpiece 
he has created us anew in his in christ jesus we are called to do good things he has planned from for us from the long past in romans 9 verse 21 it says do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good paul further explains that god's workmanship is about good work not any good work not good works that we may choose for ourselves not good works done with ulterior motive in our mind no we are god's workmanship to do these good works god has prepared in advance hallelujah for us to do in advance for us to do you see god is an all-seeing god before we were even born god had worked in mind for us he has worked in mind for us he knew exactly what good work will advance his kingdom in the place we will be at the time we become his workmanship he got it all worked out he's he he, he has it all worked out for a long time that's the truth you are beautifully and wonderfully made by god's first phase of work without god's second phase of work you are dead in your sinful nature if you are dead god can complete his work in you if you come alive by his grace through the faith in jesus christ god will complete his work in you you will become his beautiful and purposeful workmanship created in christ jesus to do good works which he prepared in advance for you to do that's the truth that's the truth you are god's workmanship what makes a work of art valuable its value is based on the artist who created it hallelujah you dear friends are a piece of art created by great god by god himself king david described it this way for you created my innermost being you knit me together in my mother's womb i praise you because i am fearfully and wonderfully made your works are wonderful i know that very well my frame i'm not hidden from you when i was made in the secret place when i was woven together in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be hallelujah that's psalm 139 from verse 13 to verse 16. woman was and is of, of god's most magnificent creation as a mother of as a matter of fact she was the grand finale after god fashioned eve creation was complete and he took a rest god has placed in our hearts a love for beauty and a desire to be beautiful let's go back to the beginning of time and reflect on our magnificent beginning after god created the sun the moon the stars the earth water creeping things flying animals he created man but something was missing for adam there was no creature suitable for him this is the only time god said an aspect of his creation was not good he said it is not good for man to be alone that's in genesis chapter 2 verse 18. so the lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at the at that place and the lord god fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man and he said this is now bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man that genesis chapter 2 from verse 22 to from verse 21 to verse 24 why god created the whole world and his contents he made something a little special when he made a woman the lord 
made something special when he created uh, uh, Eve. Hallelujah. He fashioned Eve. He didn't simply make you. He fashioned you with an extra special care. Meticulous detail. You are a thing of beauty. A sight to behold. And one of the most spectacular masterpieces of God. A work of art. A valuable originality. Uh, a one of a kind. A creature with robust stroke of love. My prayer for us today is, Dear Lord, Thank you that I am cheerful and wonderfully made. Forgive me when I complain about your masterpiece. My nose, my hip, my ears, whatever. I praise you for the intricacies of human body. The fact that your heart, my heart beats without my telling it to do it. My lungs inhale and exhale without instruction. And my reflexes react automatically thank you that i'm fearfully and wonderfully made in jesus name amen you are fearfully you are wonderfully made we are god's workmanship the lord bless you for listening it's always a great joy to read the book with all of us and we're going to continue as we read the next chapter the coming day we have two more chapters to read in you are that's chapter six and chapter seven and the first book is done and then we'll move into the second book god bless you have a wonderful wonderful you're beautiful you're wonderfully made don't let anybody look down on you you are unique god values you so much and enjoy your intricacies your beauty that our god god you know who created you god he is the artist that have made you just rejoice love you all and we come back again. God bless you.